there, my name's Andy Young. I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand. And this is a short video showing you how to test uh, an air temperature sensor. Now these are one of the family of sensors that work alongside or work for and feed information to an electronic fuel injection system. Um, they have a variable resistor inside there which varies its resistance based on temperature. And all we need to do is measure the resistance of this unit to find out if it's working properly or not. Now sometimes they can go fully open circuit so we're not going to get any kind of resistance. Um, well, in fact we're going to get you know infinite resistance, it's going to be open circuit, no current flow. Um, or they can go fully closed circuit so we're going to get no resistance. Okay, so let's grab a couple of multimeters. We'll use one as our electronic uh, temperature gauge, um, and the other one we're going to going to put onto the ohm setting, so we can see a change in the actual um, resistance values. Now this is off a 1996 Toyota Rav4. It's the one that I'm going to be doing the engine rebuild on soon, hopefully, and. Um, I don't know the specs, no idea. So what I'll do is once I've done the video is I'll find the specs online and I'll put them in this video for you. What I'm looking for is um, somewhere, you know, a, a range in the signal. I want to see the resistance change based on temperature. And we'll make some notes to what readings we get based on temperature. Uh, I can use, I've got a, um, little heat gun kicking around somewhere so we can lay that on the bench and we can move that nearer and nearer to increase the temperature and we'll make some note, let's say we'll take a temperature reading say every sort of 10 degrees C from ambient and it's probably about 25 degrees at the moment so we'll, we'll make some measurements write them down and then we'll do some research and find out what the specs are for this particular component and you'll need to do that for your car. When you're testing one of these, sure, you can put a multimeter on there, you can say, well, we're getting some kind of resistance, and I can see it changing as it warms up. You know, I put it in my hand, it's gonna warm up, resistance changes. Yes, it's a bit basic. It's not conclusive. Yes, it works. Is it working to spec? You have no idea. So you've got to find the specs, and you've got to, you've got to relate your readings to what the manufacturer says it should be doing, because if this gives a slightly different resistance based on a set temperature, let's say 20 degrees C, it's, it's got a different resistance outside spec to what it should have. The ECU, it's actually thinking that it's warmer or maybe a bit colder than what it really actually is, and it's going to change the fueling to that engine uh, to match what it thinks the air temperature is. So as the air temperature drops, the air gets more dense, we've got more oxygen going into the engine, so therefore it's going to give it more fuel. As the air temperature warms up, the air gets less dense, there's less oxygen in there, and the engine or the ECU is going to give the engine the engine a leaner mixture, less fuel through the injectors. It's going to reduce the duty cycle of that inject of the injectors very slightly to lean off the mixture. So it needs to know an accurate signal of air temperature. That's why it has one of these. Okay, so to the test. Okay, so I've set us a little rig up. Now, um, I have in the past used warm air from a hairdryer or a heat gun or whatever to test these things, these um, air temperature sensors. But in reality, it's, it's a bit ambiguous, you know. It's very difficult to control air temperature. It's a lot easier to control water temperature. And uh, I'm basically, I'm using the same rig, although it's been adapted slightly, um, to uh, when I measured a coolant temperature sensor, there's a different video on that. And here we've got, just to run through the kit, we've got a, a digital temperature gauge, basically a, a multimeter with a function on there. Uh, we've got a digital thermometer down into the water. Now that thermometer is not touching the vessel, uh, the beer tankard. It's not touching the sides and it's not touching the bottom and that's really important to get an accurate temperature. And we're around about 24 degrees at the moment. Now on this other gauge here we've got uh, the resistance. Now on there we've got 2.29 kilo ohms of resistance and we're around about, well we're not in the water yet, but uh, the water's about 24 degrees. 
Now, this time round, I'm going to suspend this by hand into the actual water. Now, we don't want to get water in where the terminals are because that might affect the resistance value, and plus, it's not really designed for that. But if we just hold that in there, and we're going to basically wait until we get a steady reading, and then we can record that. Okay, so at 24 degrees C, we've got basically 2.33 ohms. Okay, so at 24 degrees, 2.33 ohms, kilo ohms. 24 degrees, 2.33 kilo ohms. Okay, now we're just going to bring the water temperature up very slightly to 25. Hopefully I won't overcook it. No idea how much to put in there. We'll get our special stirring device. And we need to make sure that, that the water is fully stirred and that we're actually at 25 degrees. Okay, so 25 degrees is no doubt going to be a spec that we're going to be given in the workshop manual. Usually they step up every five. Okay, so we'll plunk that back in the water again and we'll wait for the resistance reading to settle. And you can see this is far more controlled than trying to use warm air. And a heat gun, you know, you're up and down so quick. And, you know, does the temperature, does the, the electronic thermometer react faster than the actual um, sensor? Probably does. In which case you could be getting a very, you could be taking your readings very inaccurately. Okay, so at 25 degrees, we've got essentially 2.216 kilo ohms. 2.216. 2.216 kilo ohms. And that was 25 degrees C. Okay, now I think we can ramp it up to 30 degrees C now. We need to lose a bit of that water. Just get rid of some of that. Still at 25 degrees C, and we want to get to 30, so we'll just put a bit more warm water in there. Let's see what we're at now. Okay, 28. It's a pretty good uh, digital thermometer, actually, this. Okay, let's see if that's going to be 30. We'll mix it up. Oh, we've overcooked it, we've gone to 31. A bit of coal to go in. Bring that back down to 30. Is that going to be enough? It is important you keep stirring. Oh, just a drop more, I reckon. Don't do that. Okay, one more stir. Okay, 30 degrees. Right, so let's get it back in the water and get a reading for 30 degrees. Okay, so we've dropped under the 2 kilo ohm threshold now. It's really important that you have the patience to wait until the reading levels out. We need to take an accurate reading on this. We're trying to determine whether or not this sensor is within spec or not. There's no point in rushing it. Oh, slowing down. Ah, oh, don't do that. Okay. I think we're about there. So one point eight one two kilo ohms. One point eight one two kilo ohms. And that was for 30 degrees C. 
Okay, so I'll crank it up now to 35 degrees. See if that's enough. That, a bit more yet. There we go. And back into the water again. Okay. Obviously the range that an air temperature sensor works within is a much smaller range than uh, that of a coolant temperature sensor. Now if we were doing a coolant temperature sensor we usually take a reading about every 10 degrees. But the range for a, an air temperature sensor really is about, you know, normal sort of minus 20 degrees is about as cold as most, most cars get. I mean in New Zealand we're lucky if we get below zero. But most manuals will go down to about minus 20. And up to about 40, maybe 45 degrees on a really hot day, I suppose. So it's best to take readings every 5 degree, in, in 5 degree increments for an air temperature sensor. So 1.514. That'll do. 1.514. 1.514. Four kilo ohms, and that was 35 degrees C. Okay, we have to lose some more water out of the jug now. Everything's turning itself off. Right, thinks we're going home. All right, so we need to get to 40 degrees now. See if we're about far off at that. That was a good guess, wasn't it? Okay, so 40 degrees. Stick it back in. Okay, so uh, 40 degrees C. We've got a resistance of 1.250. Excellent. degrees C. Okay, let's get it up to 45. Cool. Okay, so at 45 degrees C, let's see what we get. I think we're pretty much leveled out at 1.24, 1.024. Yeah, 1.024, 1.024 kilo ohms. All right, let's try and go for the big 50. Okay, 50 degrees. Last last one. Okay, starting to level out now. So at 50 degrees C, which realistically is about as hot as the air ever really gets in pretty much most places. It is important to be as accurate as you possibly can do in these tests, otherwise you might find that a sensor that actually is in spec just is actually out of spec. Okay, so 0.867. So 0 0.867, so 867 ohms. Okay, I reckon that'll do for now. So there you go. That's how to test, I feel, really accurately, uh, an air temperature sensor using water as the heat source rather than using, um, you know, warm air. You're coming from a, a hairdryer or a blog, and it's so, the temperature fluctuates so quickly with one of those devices that really it's very, very difficult to get an accurate reading. These things are waterproof, let's face it, they actually operate in the airstream and we do get moisture running through the airstream on a regular basis, like on a foggy day and stuff. So these things are waterproof and I see no reason at all why you can't test them in that way. Now we've got our readings. There you go, so I'll be uh, trawling around the internet trying to find 
a PDF workshop manual for that particular uh, year of RAV4 with a 2 litre uh, inline 4 engine. And we can compare what the results were that we got to what the specifications are. And uh, hey, you know, we can make it from that, we can decide whether or not this particular sensor is working within specification or whether it's going to need to be replaced. Okay, um, I hope you found that video helpful. Um, if you did, then why not subscribe to the channel? There's lots and lots of videos going up on a regular basis, uh, which could help you with other issues that you have with your car and show you how to test things. You know, and if you're a budding mechanic and just learning the ropes, then I think these videos are going to be really helpful to you, as they are all my students at Unitech. If you have any questions or comments, then please leave them down the bottom, and I'll do my very best to get back to you as soon as possible. And uh, well, that's the end of another one of our one of my videos, actually. Okay. Um, so thanks for watching, and uh, until next time, cheers for now, over and out.